this is delhi the nation's capital or maybe the most polluted capital city in the whole world the average aqi or the air quality index of delhi stays in the 150 range but these levels can spike up so high during october to december months this scenario is not only about delhi if we consider the world's top 30 most polluted cities 21 of them would be from india the major sources for pollution in delhi are due to vehicle exhaust exhaust from heavy industries such as power generation or even other factories stubble burning by farmers in the nearby states the situations can get so worse that you won't be able to see each other even on a normal sunny day but the delhi government has really stepped up their game they've installed anti smog guns at large construction sites processed liquid solution for farm fields to prevent stubble burning implemented hot spot specific action plans to contain pollution and even provided subsidies for the adoption of evs all these steps might bring about a temporary relief to the present scenario but it's not a permanent solution if we look closer the main villain here is carbon and oxides of carbon that are being emitted due to the use of non renewable fossil fuels if we were to even bring a remote change in the situation we will have to put a lot of money and effort in the transition from non renewable sources to renewable sources of energy our prime minister narendra modi has set an ambitious goal to reach 450 gigawatts of renewable energy capacity by 2030 this was a giant leap and a possible one this was india's big step for the transition towards a renewable energy and on the other side this is an opportunity for many companies to get their hands on a billion dollar industry and one of the first to make a move was mukesh ambani and reliance reliance industries jamnagar complex is the world's biggest oil refinery with a capacity to process about 1.4 million barrels of petroleum per day this means that reliance generated about 45 million tons of carbon dioxide emissions from its own operations which puts the company among the top emitters in india so when someone like mukesh ambani initiates a transition towards renewable energy sources it's very much welcome in the international climate summit of 2021 ambani talked highly of green hydrogen and its potential of being a critical element in the world's decarbonization plans because hydrogen being carbon free is considered to be the best and cleanest source of energy he even unveiled his plan to produce hydrogen under 1 dollar per kilogram within a decade so his initial plans are to bring the cost down to 2 dollars per kilogram of hydrogen which at present takes about 5 to 6 dollars out of the 450 gigawatt of renewable energy reliance plans to establish at least 100 gigawatts by 2030 sunlight being so abundant in india one can generate over 1000 gigawatt of solar power which would take less than 0.5 percentage of the country's total land mass the company would then use the power generated from this solar plant to produce hydrogen by electrolyzing water so reliance focus is really on hydrogen and its potential to disrupt the mobility and energy transition markets so as a first step they are developing the dhirubhai ambani green energy jika complex over 5000 acres in jamnagar it would be amongst the largest integrated renewable energy manufacturing facility in the world the complex would have four jika factories which would cover the entire spectrum of renewable energy The four giga factories will comprise an integrated solar photovoltaic module factory an advanced energy storage battery factory an electrolyzer factory for the production of green hydrogen and a fuel cell factory for converting the hydrogen into motive and stationary power for further use so they are planning to invest about 75000 crores in all these initiatives so mukesh ambani's ambitious commitment is to make reliance a net carbon zero company by 2035 now all the fairy tales aside to produce 1 kg of hydrogen you require 39 kilowatt hour to 48 kilowatt hour of electricity so if you plan to produce such humongous amount 
forms of solar energy which by itself is renewable why would you want to spend a large amount of it for the process of electrolysis to make hydrogen secondly the storage of hydrogen itself is a costly business and on top of that to obtain electricity from hydrogen gas it has to be conveyed to fuel cells where it combines with oxygen and results in a chemical reaction that generates electricity and heat and finally the most important parameter the requirements of huge amounts of water for the process of electrolysis but yeah if you could conduct electrolysis on sea water and produce hydrogen successfully then it would be a ground breaking discovery but until then these questions still remain all that being said there is no denying that renewable energy is the future and all the efforts even how big or small they are has to be appreciated and looked out for Oh, 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 oh,